Hi listeners, Kristen here. We have Ora Nadrich and Johnny Calloway. They've both been on my show many times, but it's been a couple of years that we've all been on together. And since that time, Ora Nadrich has opened her Institute for Transformational Thinking. We're going to talk about what a thought coach is, which is what she is. She's also an author of many incredible books and Johnny Calloway, author as well, two great people. And we just go at it as we always do with amazing conversation. Thanks for joining us. I'm not the house of cards that falls down easily. Oh, I'm strong enough to handle what you throw at me. Welcome to Mental Health News Radio. I'm your host, Kristen Sinanta Walker. Just what are we going to discuss? The intimacy that is mental health. Let's continue to make it as comfortable as discussing brain health or heart health. This show has been on the air for several years and we have amazing co-hosts. And then we created a network of podcasters on mentalhealthnewsradionetwork.com, a place where every possible facet of mental well-being can be talked about openly. My show, after several hundred interviews, the format is this. Intimate, deep, funny, touching, sometimes uncomfortable, but always vulnerable conversations with interesting people. The goal is to have you, our listening family, many of you who have become my good friends, feel as though you are listening in on private conversations. Thank you for tuning in and becoming part of this amazing journey with me and now with our network of podcasters. Just knowing this podcast might be helping any of you realize you are not alone on this journey called being a human being makes doing this podcast worth every second. After all we promised we'd be cordial. Laura and Johnny, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a while. Yes, it has. Thank you so much for having us, Kristen. So great to connect with you again. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Johnny. Hey, sweetheart. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Thanks for having us. And yes, it's been too long. Yeah. So, I mean, how long has it been? Has it been a couple of years since we, I know Johnny, you and I talked, but Laura, has it been a couple of years? I, you know what? I think it has. I think I, you know, I've been on your show a few times first with says who, and then with live true, I believe it was around the time when my book had just come out. So right. it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was just at the beginning of the network then so it has been a while <laughs> yeah time flies i know and then look at what's going on in the world now we'll get to all that but johnny why don't you start us off uh, with what you wanted to you know talk about in our gathering here i want to talk about and i'm so grateful to have the opportunity to talk about thought coaching and how incredible and how healing the process actually is and uh, of course i gotta uh, here's the reality of what's happening here right now uh i wouldn't know aura had i not known Kristen, and i would not be a certified thought coach had i not known aura so uh and now i'm not only a certified thought coach i can certify others to become a certified thought coach which is amazing and uh, so I really want to talk about, you know, the power and the purpose of thought coaching. That's, that's, that's pretty much true. the bottom line of it. <laughs> well, good. I want just to update our listeners because we, we have a lot of new listeners too. Um, Laura, can you explain what thought coaching is and talk a little bit about your institute? Absolutely. I would love to. So my institute is the IFTT, the Institute for Transformational Thinking, which is an organization, an institute, if you will, that I put together that really houses or is the umbrella, if you will, that um, is a platform of all the work that I do really around transformational thinking in that what that means essentially is the way we can change our lives by changing our thoughts. So I created a thought coach certification training program really from my book says who based on the says who method, which is a cognitive questioning method for challenging, if you will, questioning, doing a deep dive into the thoughts that we have, the thoughts that we tell ourselves, the thoughts that we believe and the thoughts that ultimately can actually sabotage our lives in a myriad of ways. 
having been a life coach for over 10 years, when I became a life coach, it was a relatively very new niche of coaching. I looked wide and far to become certified as a life coach. People were like, well, what's that? You know, right. what, what does a life coach do? So I knew I was, I was going up the right tree because it was intriguing to people. And I became a life coach, put my shingle out, saw a lot of people. It was all good and all great. But it wasn't until I wrote Says Who, which was really based on a, an experience that I had with a client that came to see me with a very troubling thought. And then let me sort of speed up the story. I created the Says Who method again. And I realized that what I was essentially doing was I was helping people with their thoughts. Therein lies the problem. Right. <laughs> you can coach people till the cows come home. But what I felt I was essentially doing was helping them really connect to the thoughts that were getting in the way of them manifesting the life that they wanted. So I thought, you know what? I'm a thought coach. I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I, mean, I guess I'm a life coach. That That's, a, you know, okay. But what I'm really doing is I'm thought coaching people. So I created the thought coach certification training program at which Johnny is like one of my absolute powerhouse thought coaches and have almost <laughs> like close to a hundred graduates from all over the world. And I, wow. knew, yeah, I knew that I was onto something that I, I kind of like to call it no insult to life coaches out there. I feel that the thought coach is the new life coach. Okay. That makes, and that makes a lot of sense because yeah, uh, your, your thoughts, your life is going to match your thoughts. So that makes, it's like you went to the source. Exactly. That's exactly right. It's going, or as Johnny, I think you said, it's like pulling the roots out, you know, it is going to the source of the problem for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. So speaking of that, and um, I'm not bringing a downer in because this is reality, but how has what's going on with COVID, um, you know, morphed or changed or, um, you know, the thought coaching piece, but also how you actually do it? Uh, because I, you were doing this, you, it is a school, it's an institute. So, and I, I know that means people come to you and you have in-person meetings. And I know you can do things online as well, but it's still a big shift. Well, the Thought Coach Certification Training Program it has always been online. Oh, good. It was okay. only offered up for um, certain periods of time in the year yearly calendar. And so what I decided to do with COVID is to make it evergreen so that people really can take the program you know, if or when they feel inclined to do so. So it's gotcha. there. And it was really always intended to be online. I was going to kind of do half online, half in person, but there's no need for that. It's right. an online program. People can work at their own pace. Johnny knows this very well. And it's, like I said, it's evergreen. And more and more people are interested in taking it now because of I COVID bet. I bet. than ever before. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that. I know you were doing um, something on Sundays where you would meet in person somewhere. Uh, how has that changed? Well, that was called Sacred Sunday. And that was an in-person group setting where I would have somebody come in who was uh, a guest, if you will. And it was really centered around kind of like a, you know, what is the sacred setting, if you will, to hold conversations, to raise awareness and raise consciousness. I'm doing something called Mindfulness Monday, which is a newer version of that, which is a, a weekly Facebook Live, which is sort of the new iteration of Sacred Sundays, but Mindfulness Mondays. And I have authors come on and thought leaders come on, and I've had an incredible turnout Johnny's going to be coming on of, you know, some unbelievably powerful authors and thought leaders who are really making a difference on the planet. So right. again, this is something you can tune into. You don't have to be there in person. And it's also a podcast as well. Oh, good. Very cool. I'm, I love it because, you know, we just said we haven't spoken in a while. And so I love getting a catch up for listeners and also for myself. So thank you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny, I know you're probably, you know, you love to talk. So what, what what's itching in your head right now? 
<laughs> I love to talk. Well, you, you got me. I'm, I'm caught. Uh, <laughs> I do love to talk, especially about things that I am passionate about, and I am passionate about thought coaching and healing and uh, in my own personal experience. The changing my thoughts has been all of my healing. I, Kristen, I know you and Aura both have heard me say this before, but healing is an inside job. <laughs> and what's inside are our thoughts. And so if we can go in and alter our thoughts, and I don't care what it's about. I, I, I don't care what it's about. If you can change the thought, you can change the behavior. If you change the behavior, you change the life. And so I love being a part of that process. But what I've realized uh, as far as thought coaching goes, actually, I, I came across this in my 12 step and Course in Miracles class. And then Nora says, who process just brought it home. A coach, a sponsor, a mentor. It's not really my job as a coach to help you find your answers uh, because your answers are personal to you. But what my job is to, is to help you ask the right question because we go around frantically looking for the answers to our life and how to heal. And, and quite often we're looking, uh, we're barking up the wrong tree. Right. Uh, and a coach can help you ask the right question so that you can go ah, The other part of that that's really big to me, I know in my own recovery of, from so many things, the people that helped me, that helped me the most were the people that and I know sometimes they had to get so tired of it because I do love to talk. Uh, <laughs> they would let me ramble. Obviously, I do too. So that was not yeah. a that was I, not I a jab. It, I didn't take it. As a, <laughs> I didn't take it as a dig uh, at all. Uh, Good. But the uh, they would let me ramble until I would stumble across my answers. Right. And they would just gently guide me with another little question that would make me think on an even deeper level. And it's so empowering when you realize you've got your answers. You just don't know how to find them. True, I, I think it's interesting too. And we, I do another show on the network called Empowered Empaths with um, someone who's certainly been a mentor for me. I, I wouldn't even know what to call her. I mean, the only word that we can really think of that makes the people understand is healer. Um, but she's not even that she doesn't heal you. She just helps you heal yourself. And uh, I do that show called empowered empaths with her. And it's kind of funny because we'll get people listening to the two of us do the show and they'll say, I want to have someone like her in my life. I want a Martha. Her name is Martha. And I understand that. I understand wanting that. I understand, um, you know, looking for a mentor to have. It's really helpful to, to have someone like that in your life. But I, I view that very differently nowadays because she's my friend. And while she is very wise and she is in, in human terms older than I am, um, you know, I've certainly been there for her just as much as she has for me and coming from the childhood that I had where there was involvement in Scientology, there was, you know, every different kind of new age practice, what's, you know, going on and a lot of uh, impetus into having some, someone who's kind of a guru in your life that turned out to um, not be really that healthy for me. And what's been great about working with Martha is uh, I became my own guru, so to speak. So I don't need general consensus for every single decision I make in my life anymore. I may go to someone and ask their opinion, but I don't uh, rest my, my thoughts and what my actions on at the feet of somebody else to make that decision for me. And as soon as I started doing that, I really stepped into what it means to be an empowered person, to live from the center of your, of your heart space. And that's been transformative for me. So Aura, what are your thoughts on my diatribe oh, there? That is, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Really a good one. It resonates very much to how I look at the whole uh, psycho-spiritual journey, if you will. And I'll tell you why. You know, when I did become a life coach initially, I 
was really happy to put my shingle out there. And, you know, I got a lot of clients pretty quickly. And what I started to see were the people that really wanted to change and the people that weren't ready to change. And they wanted other people to do the work for them. So I thought to myself, you know, I'm not a psychologist and I'm not for me, it wasn't about, even though I'm an analyzed person and I value tremendously talk therapy, I think it's very valuable. And were it not for me going on my own uh, psycho spiritual journey into union analysis, which helped me have my aha moment. So I think we've all had our own paths to get us here. But I think that what I had really recognized is that I didn't want to just have people keep paying me money just so that I could be in their life. So just so that they could sit there and want to talk about the same problems over and over and over again. You know, if you're not going to do the work, then why bother? Right. You it's know? like, I, I'm not here to help you spiritually bypass. Exactly. Totally. totally. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, look, I, I'm whatever gets you through the night. It's not for me to say, right. but you know, it's like, what is the point of paying you know, a lot of money to a teacher, guru, mentor, coach, whatever you want to call that person that you're projecting onto. And I think what's so great about the Thought Coach program, what I noticed is that do your work, you know, walk your talk, commit to changing your thoughts, which will change your life, as Johnny and I talk about a lot, and get on your way go, go, go on, get on. You know, it's not about projecting onto another person. And yeah, of course it feels good to be around somebody who's got great energy. I mean, we recognize that, but why not make your energy better? (laughs) You know, Right. Exactly. Why not not you be the one that's got some really fabulous energy and that you start to like your own company more. And, and, you know, you and I, Aura have gotten these into these discussions, Johnny, you have as well, where it doesn't mean that you are policing your yourself because that's a that's a harsh way to look at looking at your thoughts it's and it doesn't mean that every thought is going to be a happy one because we do need to experience the full range of you know humanity which isn't always rainbows and unicorns (laughs) as i like as i like to say kristen there are a lot of colors in the crayola box yes and there's even black and gray Right. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes it's coming out of those, um, allowing yourself to have those black and gray moments. Yeah, it's real. It's called real life. It's just knowing what to do with those thoughts. And that's what we're talking about. It's like, what do you do with the thoughts that want to pull you down and pull you down and down and down, you know, keep on going. Yeah. That's, that's what mindfulness is about is having an awareness of the thoughts that are not your friend. It's interesting too, how, um, you know, when you're depressed or, um, you're just in a negative headspace, you really don't want to hear anything positive. And so positivity gets a bad rap. And sometimes, you know, there is such a thing as toxic positivity, as well, um, which that's a whole other show, but it is hard when you're in that space, when you're struggling with uh, mental illness of some kind and you just, you know, I always tell people just try to go like a one step in a, in a lighter direction, just one, you don't have to, you can't go from severe depression to extreme happiness. It doesn't work like that. Just try to go to the next, the next level and then work from there if you can do that but um but it you know it's hard it's really hard for for people to do that when you're dealing with something like mental illness yeah absolutely johnny wouldn't you agree i mean yeah i i just i want to share something that uh i just personally experienced about how being able to manage my thought thoughts uh manifested very real time for me back in 1984 when i first quit drinking and drugging i could not be alone at all i was terrified of being alone and i was in bad company because i was my own worst enemy Mm -hmm. and i had a therapist tell me that she wanted me to go to see a movie by myself and i'm like who wants to do that right and and me all the time yeah yeah now i do it all the time but the thing is 
I just spent three weeks up in the mountains in North Carolina, just me and my cat. Now, I, to be honest, I was very concerned about going up there and being totally by myself. It ended up being the time of my life. I've told my friends since I got back, I can't say I really had fun, but I enjoyed the crap out of myself. <laughs> and what I realized is what my recovery has done for me, what learning how to be with my thoughts has done for me, I've become my own friend. Yeah. And I, I can sit in my own presence and, and not freak out. That's huge, Johnny. I mean, that's, that is and, really huge. Yeah. And, and uh, what, what's really cool is I really enjoyed that. And my partner told me when I told him that, he said, if you didn't get anything else out of going to that mountain because he's been with me for 35 years, a best friend for 35 years, he said, if you didn't get anything else out of going to that mountain and you got that, it was worth the trip. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, so, I, I really agree, Johnny. There, there were times when my mind would start slipping, my thinking would start slipping, and it would be like, oh, my God, you're alone. There could be a bear out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bar. I, I, I was like, okay, okay, Johnny, back it up, back it up. You haven't even heard a growl. So right, exactly. Let, let's, let's back this up and get in this moment. But I know today how to catch my thoughts as they start to take me up what, on what I call the rabbit hole. Um, yeah, you you have to be. I just talked to this. Oh my gosh, the loveliest young woman. Um, her name is Iget, and she started a. She's an immigrant. She lived in Africa during uh, what was going on with Rwanda and the genocide there. And she's created this organization that helps immigrants with their mental health. I mean, you know, you know the people that we have the the awesome experience of getting to share time with doing what we do and i'm listening to her and she's going through that mind racing time that you do in your 20s as you are developing your brain and learning these things like what to do with your thoughts and i told her about a technique that a therapist had given me a long time ago about when you make a movie in your head and you and you have to keep making it and it always has a really bad ending and um this therapist would have me say well, that's as soon as I could, you know, as soon as I could, even if it was at the end of the movie, even if I couldn't stop myself from finishing that movie, I'd say, well, that's um, something that doesn't need to happen. <laughs> and she said, I want you to say that even if it's a hundred or a thousand times a day. And I got sick of saying that and it made me go, oh my gosh, my mind runs amok. That is uh -huh. scary, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, and, and yeah. now it, it really doesn't. I can catch it immediately. I can go, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not even in a nanosecond. Okay, we're not going to, wow, that was a doozy, Kristen, and laugh about it. Oh, yeah. That's so good, Kirsten, because it's the catching it. It's, and that really is mindfulness in motion. That is having the awareness of like, okay, here I go. Okay. You know, it's, it's that when those thoughts pop in, those automatic thoughts that pop in, and, you know, not giving them the power, not wanting to hang out with that thought that we actually have a choice to go, uh, no, no, right. I mean, it really does harken back to the says who questions like, do I like this thought? Right. <laughs> what a question. Like, if you don't want to hang out with someone you don't like, why do you want to hang out with a thought you don't like? Exactly. And that is so good, too, because I, 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 I think people get this idea that you go through something traumatic and then you're supposed to heal from it or hopefully you heal from it and then a situation like that is never going to happen again and i thought that i and i would rake myself over the coals like wait a minute this scenario seems familiar why is this happening again i didn't heal enough i didn't you know any way i could blast myself or something or another and i learned this from martha you're just going back and checking your work. Yeah, beautiful. So true. Absolutely. And to have that kind of expectation on ourselves, like I'm never going to think that thought again. <laughs> I'm never going to feel that feeling again. You know, I mean, look yeah. at the burden that we're putting on ourselves. You know, hey, I just might think that thought again. Guess what? That thought just might pop into my head, you know, next Tuesday. What am I going to do about it when it does? 
you know, that's the choice. The choice is really, what do I want to do when that comes up again? Because as we know, with our life experience, that those kinds of thoughts and feelings will rear their head again. So with the information that we have, we know what to do so that we're not a slave to it, that we're not a hostage, that we don't right. throw ourselves under the bus and beat ourselves up so badly. Or try to hide from those thoughts. Like, yeah. oh no, if I do this or I buy this crystal or I, well, buy the crystal if you want, but don't buy it because you think that it's going to somehow be this magic widget that's going to keep you from having that thought. You're going to have the thought and that is okay. You are. And you know, here's the person to say what you said about spiritual bypassing and this sort of like pseudo enlightenment expectation right. of, you know, I'm all for self self-realization and self-actualization. But, you know, if you want to take the story of Buddha, if you will, it took Buddha an awful long time <laughs> before he became the enlightened one, which is what Buddha means. Okay. Right. So to just think it's going to be like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm so enlightened. I'm so awakened. And then something throws you off your center. It, I love what you said. It's like checking back with the work. I think that's a great way to put it. It's so great because I, I, I noticed this and I love this too, that the three of us are doing this because I am sitting and I'm, I'm listening and I'm also going, who was I when we spoke last? And wow. things are so different now. I love her, that who I was, and there's a lot of that you know, still here, mm -hmm. but things within me have changed so, I'm telling you, this network is like... <laughs> warp speed into, you know, spiritual growth and personal growth and all that. But, but what's interesting with that piece of checking your work, I'm in a situation where, um, 10 or 12, well, about 10 years ago, I was in a similar situation with a group and it was so toxic. It almost broke me. I almost checked myself into the very, uh, mental, uh, ve the very psych ward that I was doing volunteer work with my therapy dog. I was so broken by this bullying kind of situation that went on. Of course, I've looked at it spiritually and, you know, every which way it is me. I've analyzed it to death, but I'm in somewhat, not near what that was, but somewhat of the same dynamics. And I didn't worry about it because I thought of that. Oh, I'm just checking my work. Look how good you're doing. No one's bullying you at all. Not, not even happening. I am able to peacefully live in this experience and not have all of that torture that I had before because I have done so much work and my thoughts about it are so different than it was before. So that's fascinating too. It really is. And it's great to give ourselves credit for the, for the growth. It really is. We, 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 we deserve a little pat on the back occasionally. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not, you know, it's not an ego thing. It's a, and that's okay. The ego is there for a reason, but there, it is okay to be like, oh, wow, I have overcome some stuff. And this here is just to show me what I've overcome. Johnny, I hear you. Uh, uh, go for it. I know you have thoughts here. Speak them out. Well, I'm going to back up. <laughs> I'm going to back up to where you really first hit me. And that's the, with the recurring thoughts uh, after we think we have dealt with them. After right. we think they should be done. Uh, I use an analogy in the 12 step meetings because we have a tendency to think that if we think it, it's real. If we think it, we need to act on it, especially as addicts. Yes. Uh, so the analogy that I use is like, if you rode a bicycle to work every day for 15 years and you finally got it together enough that you could buy a car, periodically you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to think about that bicycle. That does not mean you're going to sell it and get back. Uh, uh, th that does not mean you're going to sell the car and get back on the bicycle. Right. You're going to think about it. Doesn't mean you have to act on it. And it's just going to come up. And, and what, as far as that trip I just took, what was very, very real for me when I got back, I had a beautiful time. I accomplished a lot of work that has been mm -hmm. sitting on the table for some of it for a year and a half. And I got back and my, my second night, no, yeah, my second night back, I couldn't go to sleep because my mind was telling me, somebody said something about me being a writer. Uh, and my mind was saying, you're not a writer. 
they're going to find out you're not a writer. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, and, I, and it was really freaking me out. And then I was like, I read something that I'd written in a blog to go out. And I'm like, you know what? You need to hear that. Because I was letting my mind take me down that rabbit hole. Those things still come up for me. I love what Aura says when she says, this is not drive through recovery. <laughs> right. You know, this, this is meant to become a lifestyle. And some of the, some of the thoughts that are so ingrained in us, they're going to come back through. They're, they just are. And hopefully we catch them. And by practicing this on a daily basis, we get better at catching them. And we can say, you know what, that's a lie. I'm not buying anymore. And there's two things about the mind that and the thoughts that I think is very important with thought coaching. The mind is usually doing one of two things. It's either reflecting on what has been or it's projecting on what's coming. Very rarely is it here right now. So if I can, if I can realize that, I wrote about this in my first attempt to write dragons, to, I mean, Taming the Dragon. Uh, because projection is always a fantasy. What's interesting without training our minds at all is we typically put a Stephen King ending on our movie. Oh, absolutely. It's like Psycho with a knife. Right, right. What, what, why am I going there? What? And, right, <laughs> and, and we can just as easily put a Disney ending on that movie. So if we're gonna project it and fantasize about it, at least have fun with the fantasy. Right, right. Yeah, I even have a meditation called In Live True, uh, meditation, it, present moment, memory meditation, you know, without diminishing or denying any past events that we've had or any traumas, we can recreate that memory in present time so that we're in the, we're in the position, if you will, to decide how we would want it to go. Oh my gosh. Yes. There are some accelerated res, uh, resolu Oh gosh. Accelerated something therapy. I will, I will find it. ART therapy it, it's called, and there's other therapies as well, but it's a, it's like uh, EMDR on steroids. I actually did that. And I know thought coaching is this also, I did it. I did it from a psychological perspective first, uh, when I was, my horse was attacked when I was riding it by, um, by a dog, uh, savagely attacked by a dog. And this was recent uh, this year. And, uh, it was really cool to go through this process of reliving everything that happened and seeing it through a different lens to help me heal that and be able to ride again. It is part of the healing. I will say that, Kristen, it's true. It's again, I preface by saying it's not undermining, diminishing, denying, mm -hmm. or pretending that what happened, be it a trauma, did not occur. Right. But what inspired me to write memory in present time meditation was that you don't have to be living what happened in the past in the present. Right. You know, yep. and that's the whole idea of really bringing it into a present moment awareness of how you would like to hold that memory in your mind's eye today. Right, exactly. It is not, listeners, I want to make sure that, you know, because listen, people will call me out. We are not saying this is, you know, slapping a happy sticker on no, something. It's not, not at that all. at all. It's, no. it's so empowering to choose to go through a moment that was just extremely traumatic and not do revisionist history, which is denial of what actually happened. It, it isn't that it's so empowering to go through it and, um, you know, and it visualize it happening differently, not to say that's how it happened. I am convincing no. myself that that's how, no, 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 no. It's just, it's, it's yeah. helping, but so, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening. Um, I know, I know Johnny, I'm almost at, it's happening on a neurochemical level. It is actually laying down new yes. neural pathways when you do that. So it, it's helping your brain recover from what happened and it's doing it from a physical, spiritual, emotional, oh, psychological. Yes. Yeah. And I just want to throw in really quickly, it's giving your voice the voice that you have today. Yes. You might have not had that voice in the past and that you can hear yourself have that voice today. You know, you just talked about, wow, when I think of who I was the last time we spoke and who I am today and how I've evolved on my journey, we are who we are today is not who we were back when anything happened to us. Right. You know? 
So we have a different voice to add to it, if you will. Johnny, go. <laughs> I'm sitting over chewing on my fingernails. I'm like, okay, <laughs> wait a minute, girls, wait, wait. Uh, one of the most important, impactful parts of my recovery was when I did exactly what you ladies are talking about. I, I, when, my, when I was five years old and my mother died, she asked me for a goodbye kiss and I said no. And I grew up thinking I killed her by not kissing her. Uh, and when I got into my recovery, uh, my therapist, Callie Chapel Nicholas said to me, she said, Johnny, you know, the mind doesn't know the difference in real and make believe. So she carried me on a visualization back to that hospital room when I was five years old, back to my mother asking me for that goodbye kiss. And she had me create that differently in my mind. And what she had me do was crawl up on that bed, that hospital bed, give my mother a goodbye kiss and then lay there and hold her. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that's exactly, I think, what we're all three saying. Absolutely. You know yes. I mean? we're, not yes, denying, that... we're not denying what took place, but we're, we're seeing it through a different lens today, do you know, and bringing our present awareness to that memory. You know? I want to. I want to say something about that. I, I'm never have I tried to say that my childhood didn't happen just the way it happened. But what I will say is that my perception of what it was for has changed. When when my dad was being my dad and he was abusive and he was uh, all the all the things that a dad's not supposed to be. For that child, he was just an ogre in my life that was trying to destroy my life. For me today, he was a teacher. And for me today, I appreciate who he was and what he did because he helped me become who I am. Uh, Richard Bach says in Illusions, you've lived your entire life for this moment. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Does that mean I want to do it again? Hell no. <laughs> yeah. So, but I could not be and do what I, what I am and what I do as, as I do it had I not gone through all of that. So I appreciate all the teachers that came into my life. Does that mean that those things didn't suck at the time? No, they sucked at the time. Right. And sometimes but for the me memory to heal, can suck. Yeah. I need to be willing to see it differently. Does that make Abs sense? Yes, absolutely. And I, I love uh, Martha was talking with me the other day. We were talking about doing a show. We're actually going to, I wanted to ask you guys this. This is related to, to this question. This is not me doing an ADHD spiral. Oh, squirrel. Um, there's a book called The Afterlife of Billy Fingers. Have either of you heard of that book? That's no. familiar to me. Oh, it's so good. It, I mean, it came out about seven years ago, so it's not a, a current book, but um, it's it's a woman. I think she's a lawyer. Um, she's going to be on, on the Empowered Empaths show uh, next month, but it's about her brother. Um, oh, yes, I have. Her brother. Yeah who died and she yes has, he's like kind of her guide if you will or yeah he he explains what he goes through every stage of the the afterlife experience and and uh tells her about it right i remember i remember hearing about it a while back yes yeah I it, but i've heard about it. it sounds very intriguing it was such a good book oh my gosh it's changed the way i look at um, a lot of things and Martha's when I told me about it and um, it's it's amazing to me to I don't I would not have it would not have resonated the way that it had had I read it any earlier and so we were getting with Martha and I were making our notes and getting in preparation to do this show uh, with the author who had to cancel the same day that um, the show was scheduled and then rescheduled for later but <laughs> one of the things Martha said off the cuff was, oh my gosh, Kristen, I look at myself, I remember myself and who I was and where my mind was at from 40 years ago, and I'm appalled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? If we're going to be truthful here, so am I. Doesn't mean I don't like myself then, because boy, have I had to put every age I've ever been to bed in a loving way every night for a long time. But there are things I can look back and go, you know, it is okay to be a little bit. <laughs> I mean, that's so, it's so honest to own, you know, I mean, I think that 
some of, for me, I think the life journey, what's so powerful about it is what we've gone through and how we've emerged from being maybe people that we aren't today. You know what I mean? And some people have come from really, you know, they look at the, they look at, you know, it's like, it's like sinners that have become saints. I mean, history right. is full of those stories. All, you know, all, are- all healing begins with the truth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I want to talk about this piece because this people can get kind of messed up around as have I, I'm not anymore, but the piece around, you know, in therapy, we talk about having healthy boundaries uh, because, you know, if you've had trauma or addiction or um, struggled with mental illness of any kind, you can let some people in your life that, you know, aren't exactly the healthiest people to be around. Not that you don't learn a lot, from that experience, but you can get to a point where you go, you know, I can choose to not have those people that behave that way in my life. Um, and we talk about that word boundary and I don't really resonate with that word anymore. More now I talk about energy fields and having a bubble and things like that. Uh, but I'm in a, a different headspace. but I understand how important it is to have those things and to say no and to be okay with someone else Uh, having a perception of you that is that you're not friendly enough or because they don't like someone saying no, that can be hard in the, in the spiritual world, that, that piece around saying no and, and being okay with people, maybe not really liking you. So what do you guys have to say about that? I totally think that you know, these sort of these ideals or these projections that we have on what it means to be spiritual or a spiritual person, you've got to behave like Mother Teresa 24 right. seven, you've got to, you know, you've got to aspire to be like Gandhi and Buddha and, you know, whoever, whoever that is, Christ, pick, pick your perfect person or your perfect right. deity, your perfect divine presence, whatever you want to call it. And I do really feel that there's a lot of um, mythology around that. And Mm -hmm. there's, there is, in my opinion, a lot of spiritual bypassing in those areas of that in order to be this person or call yourself that you have to be all of these things that by the way, you're assigning those things to yourself or quote my first book says who, you know, I think you have to define that in, in that being authentic let's just let's just start with that <laughs> being real to yourself to who you really are which might mean that you can honestly own that not everybody has to love you you don't have to be perfect all the time you don't have to have all the answers you don't have to have all or of anything do you know and to really own that and i think it's really confusing what our aspirations our intentions are with what our expectations are do you know Right. I think that, you know, I love that. It's my favorite quote. I quote it ad nauseum, the <laughs> Pierre Teilhard de Chardin quote, the French philosopher, mystic quote, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah. And so, you know, we are having human experiences and we're going to fall and we're going to falter and we're going to stumble and we're going to make mistakes. Does that make our spirit any less spiritual? I know. And I, I, I think about that with uh, someone that I, um, I don't really have much to, to deal with them. I was for a while. And then I figured out a way to really extend that heart bubble or energy field out to where magically I don't bump into them ever. <laughs> it's fantastic for me, but I, it, it's fascinating when some there's little microaggressions that can come at you from somebody chewing on their own stuff and it's whatever they've projected on on you and other people, whatever that is. And then to say, could you not behave that way? I, I am putting up a healthy boundary that that is not okay with me. And then they turn around and go, oh, you just don't understand what it's like to be this spiritual da da da. And they go to this place of, well, they're so above, they're part, they're a star seed, they're, 
they're part of the bifurcation process of our world and so evolved and you're the pro you know they turn around and put it back on you and i i remember someone doing this recently and i just kind of looked at him and i was like yeah nothing i can do psychologically is going to work here and i'm not going to make that argument with someone i'm certainly not going to wear it i'm just going to sit and meditate and push out that love energy field until I just don't have to deal with them anymore. Uh, and it worked fantastically. <laughs> you, said, you said, Kristen, you said a word earlier, and I really think it's about energy. I really do think like, you know, we have a choice always to take it higher or to yeah. get stuck in an energy field, vibration, whatever you want to call it, that you're playing off of with somebody else, you know? Right. And I, I do believe that we sometimes move on in our paths <laughs> connect and sometimes we run our course with somebody and we go off into different directions and you know there's also the thing I just want to add is that the whole even when I wrote my book about you know transforming negative and fear-based thoughts I, I never proclaimed that you're never going to have a negative thought again right. or you're never going to or you're never going to be angry or you're never going to say the wrong thing exactly you know, I think if you live that um if you're that sort of what's the word, you know, I was going to say uptight, but if you're, if you're really that, you know, imposing on yourself to be somebody that never gets angry or never maybe doesn't want to love everybody, or maybe right. it might take you a day or two to drop into forgiveness, you know, it's okay. It's, a, it's, it's the way you need to do it that right, rings true for you. And I don't think, we, and I don't think we have to qualify it to anybody. Exactly. I always say, do you think that the Dalai Lama doesn't get upset if somebody forget, if one of the monks forgets to put toilet paper on his toilet paper roll? Of course he does. You know, so. Well, yeah, I mean, one would think that, again, we're human. And I think, you know, by the way, the spiritual field, and I've had friends that have been called gurus and i've had friends that have been monks and you know all of those things and taken their spiritual ascetic vows and all that all good but i think that sometimes what we think someone is and then what's going on behind closed doors is not one and the same oh, absolutely boy back, take back, a, yeah guru, that goes back to your point earlier about be your own guru you know the guru right. thing Right, exactly. Yes. Don't become a guru of yourself even because then you might become a narcissist. No, I'm kidding. I'm going in on the on a different track there. <laughs> but yeah, sure. yeah, you have to look step one foot into the film industry and you'll get all kinds of lessons around how people get put into some kind of guru status. <laughs> Yes, I was in the film industry for 10 years. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it, it, it's I, I always think someone that goes into that field, that is someone that really had to brush up against a very difficult task to not go for that shiny object because it's laid out so easy in that realm. So, um, you know, you become a war, you can become quite the thought warrior for yourself. Um, Yes. in certain and certain fields that you choose to go into johnny i can hear your breathing what are you thinking you've got two women with him here johnny you've got two bookends here <laughs> oh uh, i i'm the thorn between two roses uh, oh. <laughs> so you know backing up uh to where you started there to, with the boundary thing uh what i've discovered for myself is like i just don't play uh, if somebody's really coming across with some energy that i'm just not it, it, it just isn't part of my makeup i just don't play I, I just back out of the conversation there's a and i can't believe this is the first time i'm mentioning a course in miracles i mean i've done really well <laughs> no, I'm shocked. It's um, 50, 51 minutes and <laughs> yeah and uh but there's a one of the lessons in the workbook is in my defenselessness my safety lies and in Al-Anon there's a statement that they make that is so profound to me and and that is uh I don't have to show up to every fight I'm invited to and mm -hmm. people are constantly inviting us to fight I mean all you gotta do is bring up politics and somebody's gonna be something's oh, gonna boy. happen oh boy and, especially now and it doesn't matter it doesn't yeah, matter exactly. which side of the coin you stand on uh there, right. there's we're just different 
And but the the thing for me is if I, I just don't engage. Uh, and and part of that is about you know we fight because we want to be right, and I, I don't care. Uh, you know, it's that old thing of like you want to be right or you want to be happy. Well, I'd much rather be happy. Mm -hmm. And I, and today I'm totally okay with somebody else being wrong, so it, it, it's okay. I uh, I don't spend a lot of time even thinking about boundaries anymore. I, I think what I am and what I'm not okay with just kind of comes across in my energy and. Uh, people in the 12 step rooms, we are taught not to say no to the program. And that's very strongly enforced. But there's times I have to. And, and it's just real. I mean, then you guys were talking about Gandhi and uh, Buddha. And, you know, I've said for years, Gandhi wasn't born Gandhi. He had to become Gandhi. And we that's all that. have to do that. Buddha was a real human being, just like the rest of us. Yeah, and, exactly. And, you know, just like I, what I was trying to say when I was talking about my trip on the mountain and the fact that I came back and I'm telling myself, "You're not a writer," and and you know, the truth is, I am a writer. I'm, I'm my my ego starts pulling out what it calls evidence, mm -hmm. and it's like, "See, you're not a writer. You you don't even have an eleventh grade education." I don't care. I'm a writer. That's right. Exactly. And, uh, you know, there's a line that I learned a long time ago from one of my therapists, and that is, I have every right in the world to tell my ego to shut the F up. <laughs> <laughs> and your ego probably is grateful when you do. <laughs> yeah, I just, just shut up. You, yeah. you know, you, you don't get to run the show now. That's right. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I... Uh, that's the boundary thing for me is I, I just I, I agree I agree I agree that you know you don't have to show up and there's many times that I'm like well that's not my business and those are great teaching tools and sometimes I do engage and and that's a good thing too if you're still you know if it, if there's something that you've got to work on for yourself standing up for yourself uh whatever it is so right I I will do it and say mm, Okay, I'm not okay with this. And then what doesn't happen for me now is I don't do the torture. Oh, I was mean. Oh, I was this horrible jerk to this person. Now they're not going to like me. Whatever, all that stuff. Now I just go, hey, it is what it is. And then right. you move on. The I should have been, or I should have done this, or I should have done that. You know, it's well, like, what waste of precious time it's okay to it's okay to reflect you know i call it and it, there's something that i that i created and live true called mindfulness repair meaning that if i am really rude or i walk out of the house and i cut you know my partner off or i'm not really listening to my children or whatever and i get into the car and i'm on my way to where i'm going and i go wow i was really short there I was really, I never even looked them in the eye. I never really, I wasn't really listening to them. You know, that's like, for me, that's a kind of mindfulness repair, like note to self. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks for checking in with myself to know that I'll circle back if I can, you know, at another time and go, Hey, I'm sorry. I was really maybe just not present with you today. Or right. if you don't feel you want to do that, that's okay too. You know, for me, sometimes I think those mindfulness repair moments help because sometimes we're not aware of our behaviors and sometimes we are. <laughs> sometimes we're very aware of how we're being because we want to be that way. And sometimes it's, it's really interesting to watch a situation play out and you and seeing, I don't need to be involved in that, but you're watching it and just be kind of, I, I look at it sometimes where I'm doing the check on your work thing and I'm, I'm witnessing something going on. I don't need to get involved in it, but I want to, I, but I'm watching what's going on and I'm sitting with my hands kind of under my chin in, in some glee with myself that I'm not stepping into that muck, but I'm watching it enough to know that I'm not stepping in it. So I picture my fingers kind of under my chin going, <laughs> look you know, at what I'm not getting involved in right now. <laughs> I'm going to interject something here. I, I think the determining factor for me, because there are times that I do engage, but I, I think I have to 
to, to utilize thought coaching and thought management, uh, I have to ask myself why. What's my motivation here? Absolutely. For, for participating in this. Mm -hmm. If I'm just trying to prove somebody else is wrong, I, I just need to leave it alone because right. it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if I think the other person might gain something or that maybe the other person can give me something beneficial from it, then absolutely I'll engage. But I, I don't like to expend all that energy just so I can be right. All right, uh, exactly. That, that's the big thing for me. What's what's my motivation here? And that's where the thought management comes into play is being aware of myself enough to say, you know what, Johnny, this is just you wanting to look cool. Because I do like to look cool. <laughs> we are human. We are here. That's what I loved about that Billy Fingers book. Johnny, I highly recommend that you grab it and um, or a refresher on it. Well, you guys know how it always happens with the three of us. We can go on and on and on, and it's all good. But for today, <laughs> I want our listeners to know um, where they can go, you know, online to find you, Aura, and find you, Johnny, and and do some thought coaching of their own. So, Aura, will you start? Yes, and. Kristen, as always, whenever we talk, it could be years. Um, it's I it feel like I'm just sitting down with my old friend again. So <laughs> yep, same thank here. you. Thank you for being gracious, the gracious the hostess that you always are. So the best way to find me is auraneedridge.com. There's everything on that website, including if you want to look into the thought coaching program. Um, it's all there. It's all there. Fantastic. And Johnny. You can find everything I do on johnnycalloway.com. Uh, really simple. J-O-H-N-N-I-E-C-A-L-L-O-W-A-Y.com. And what uh, did you used to say to me all the time, Johnny with an I-E? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to say that yeah. all the time. Yeah, and it was Kristen with an I. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So, uh, but yeah, and you can find everything there. I will say this. If you look for me on any of the social media right now, all of that stuff's being worked with and, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, what's the other one? Twitter. They're all being worked <laughs> on. Uh, so uh, you may not find me there right now, but it's coming. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming back on. We should do this more often. Yes, not so long. I know, exactly. Not so long between listeners. I want to thank you too for tuning in to another episode of Mental Health News Radio. Hi listeners, I'll make it quick. These are some really cool places that give discounts and other cool things for listeners of Mental Health News Radio Network. If you want to get amazing help with healing from narcissistic abuse, go to healfromanarcissist.com. If you want CBD products that are the best of the best, I use them myself, go to pros, P R O Z E.com and use the code mental health 20, mental health 20. If you want to get daily perk ups that help retrain your brain to think more positively, go to perkupdaily.com. And also, just because this one's fun, snarkycandles.com. I guarantee you'll love them. Snarky with a Y, S N A R K Y, candles.com. And don't forget, if you want to hear all the shows on the network about first responders, you can go to firstrespondermentalhealthnetwork.com and all of our shows that focus on narcissistic abuse, narcissisticabusehealingnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and back to the show. But never without good intentions I heat up and act on my emotions Thanks so much for listening to Mental Health News Radio. Our podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, and hundreds of other podcast apps. Or you can visit our website at mentalhealthnewsradio.com. If you have a question or would like to be a guest, become a podcaster on our network, or join the amazing organizations that help keep us on the air, please email us at info at mhnrnetwork.com. Get ready for that special goodbye from our resident therapy dog, Miles, and a special thanks to Emily Sohn for letting us use her incredible song, Cordial, for our podcast music. Listen to the full song on SoundCloud at emily.sonne. Don't be surprised when I don't hate on you. After all we promised, we'd be cordial. Sometimes in you, I can find it. 
Ну, давай. 